Hey everybody, my name is Josh Manicor. I specialize in helping people get jobs in cybersecurity and IT. In today's video, we're going to be covering the top 10 misconceptions about cybersecurity. So number one, it's all about hacking. People have this misconception that cybersecurity is like this high speed hacking crazy stuff but it's actually like 50% paperwork depending on the domain that you work in. There's a lot of different domains in cybersecurity. Hacking is just like, you know, it's, it's probably like 5% of cybersecurity, something like this. Number two, cybersecurity is only an IT issue. IT is a big part of cybersecurity, but there's also like legal, the risk department, supply chain management, even vendor management. There's a lot of different areas of cybersecurity that are not only like technical and like IT related. Number three, you have to be a math genius or good at math. I can't even like really think of an example where I used any notable math in my cybersecurity career beyond basic arithmetic or, or algebra or something like this. I think most people should know algebra, to be honest, but you don't even like, you don't need that much math to be a good security practitioner. Number four, cybersecurity tools will solve everything. Big misconception. I have a couple different takes on this. The first one is if you have the best tools in the world, but your staff is inept or they didn't set them up properly, it's the same as not having any tools, right? You just is wasting a few million dollars a year on nothing. And then another way to think about this, you can have a perfect, not perfect, but you can have a really good program with no tools, right? If your staff is really smart and they can't be affected by social engineering and they practice good security hygiene and you just patch everything you can you can get away with having really minimal tools right if everyone behaves really well right normal practice you have some basic tools everyone knows how to use them everyone practice security hygiene and you you do a good job but if you don't use the tools properly then the tools are useless right on uh, number five a single certification guarantees a job. This is one of my biggest pet peeves because people always posting on Reddit, like I got security plus, I can't get an interview. Certifications are one part of the pie when trying to get a job. Um, look at this graphic, the employability framework. This is the stuff that you have to worry about. You don't need to get all of these things, but these are things that help like build your case and help you break into the field faster than normal. Certification is part of it, but as you see, there's more than just certifications, right? Cybersecurity is only defensive or only offensive. Uh, this is kind of similar to number one. There's a lot of different components of cybersecurity. The government, for sure, they do some crazy cybersecurity operations offensively. I was considering applying to the naval, what is it, naval cyber warfare engineer. And to even, to even apply for that program, you have to have some high speed offensive capability that's like malware reverse engineering and being able to use a debugger and look at um, assembly language and understand the registers, memory manipulation, all this crazy offensive security stuff. So it's not only defensive, there's, a, there's like a lot of offensive things to it. And the seriously offensive stuff is quite hard. I will, I will say this much. And number seven, once secure, always secure. This is not true, obvious, I shouldn't say obviously, but this is not true because there's a lot of vulnerabilities that we don't even know about. There's a whole black market of vulnerabilities where someone will, for example, they'll find a, a hole or something in like an iPhone, like Apple iOS. And then instead of telling Apple, they go and sell that exploit to Iran for like, you know, several million dollars. And then they actively exploit iPhone users, something like this. There's this whole like underground thing about that. And if we don't know the vulnerabilities exist, then we can't patch them, right? So we can't even say we're secure. You're never secure in the beginning, right? But if you reach your baseline of, you know, okay, we're secure now, you're not. It's going to like degrade over time and become less secure. It's a, like an ongoing cycle. Like if you look at the vulnerability management um, life cycle, it's always like ongoing because more stuff is being discovered. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Number eight, cybersecurity professionals work alone. Um, I sometimes wish this were true back when I was like working my normal cybersecurity jobs, but there's a lot of collaboration with other departments. It's just nonstop collaboration, especially if you're in governance. Governance or GRC is like, that's all you're doing is collaborating with people. And even the technical side, if you're doing, if you're doing like incident response, is just more collaborating, more collaborating. So just, you know, expect to be working with other people once you break into the field. Um, number nine, cybersecurity is boring and monotonous. Some people think this, I think, I think there's people on both camps. People think it's like really boring all the time. And there's people who think it's like really high speed all the time. To be honest, I'm, I'm more in the camp of thinking cybersecurity is a bit boring and monotonous because it's not often 
cool and exciting things happen. It's more just like modifying people's behavior, implementing security controls, doing risk assessments. And that's that's a bit boring to me, but it's not boring all the time. It's not exciting all the time. It's just like a mixture of both. So don't you know manage your expectations there, if you will. Number 10, you need a computer science degree, or this one should probably be, you need to know how to code. Um, I made a video talking about the different domains of cybersecurity and the different levels of coding you need for each domain or that you can expect to have. Some domains you don't even need to be able to code, right? Like if you're doing audit, governance, something like this, like why would you need to code for that? Sometimes it can help and make your job easier, but it's not necessary. Um, and also number 10 can be interpreted as you need a degree to break into cybersecurity. A degree helps, right? If you look at the employability framework, this like education in quotes, um, this means like a degree. But if you don't have one, you can look at the other areas of the employability framework and uh, make up for your lack of degree somewhere else. So for example, if you don't have a degree, instead of getting only security plus, maybe you get security plus and CISSP or security plus and SISA, something like this. You can always make up for your lack of degree by doing something else. Degrees are good, especially with the advent of WGU and their cybersecurity bachelor's degree. Uh, it's blessed by the NSA. Definitely check out this video. I break down how to get that degree as fast as possible, but you don't need a degree. Um, you know, you can make up for it in other ways. Um, you don't need a computer science degree. You don't need to be able to code, but all of these things like help, right? They all help build your case and help you get hired faster than normal. But yeah. Hope this was useful. Um, let me know in the comments section down below if you think I should have added something, like I missed something or you think I'm like wrong about something. I'm open to hearing it. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.